Good morning YouTube, our micro-learning topic for today is on the perspective overview of plant-derived vaccines. If you are new to the Biotech Whisperer channel, a warm welcome, we look forward to sharing bite-sized videos with you. Let's dive into the topic for today. Plant-derived vaccines. It has been nearly three decades since the advent of plant engineering technology. Despite the promising potential of plant-based pharmaceuticals or vaccines, significant challenges remain in bringing these products to market. Only a handful approved plant-based vaccines have made it to the market thus far. More recently, the plant-derived COVID vaccine, branded Cubifens, from Medicago was approved by Canada in 2022. Commercialization is a long journey. The journey towards commercialization of plant vaccines requires a significant amount of effort and time, however, several candidate vaccines for human and animal use are currently being tested in clinical trials. This video aims covers the latest advancements in plant engineering and regulatory requirements for plant-based vaccines, and provides an overview of the human and animal vaccines undergoing clinical trials. Vaccines are economically effective. Vaccines are the most economical and effective way to decrease the impact of infectious diseases. Efforts are ongoing to enhance vaccine quality and accessibility while decreasing production costs. Conventional vaccines are produced by using a weakened form of the pathogen or by creating an inactivated version of the disease-causing organism or a part of it. However, these vaccines carry the risk of contamination from unintended agents. Plants as effective and scalable bioreactors Plants have the capability to produce large quantities of recombinant proteins as bioreactors, which are free from pathogens that affect humans and animals and can be stored at low cost without refrigeration. Many recombinant proteins have already been produced in plants, leading to a shift in the production of protein-based pharmaceuticals from bacterial, fungal, and mammalian cell cultures to plants and plant cell cultures. Plants suitable for scaling production A range of plants, including tobacco, rice, maize, potato, alfalfa, lettuce, tomato, carrot, peanut, and soybean, are utilized as hosts for gene introduction through various in vitro methods such as protoplast or cell culture, or hairy root culture. The introduction of genes into plants can be achieved through routine nuclear or chloroplast genome recombination. The choice of plant species and technology used for vaccine production determines the administration route, as some plants can only be consumed after processing, and certain treatments such as heat or pressure may destroy the antigen. Cereal crops are desirable for producing subunit vaccines because the vaccines produced in the seeds remain stable during long-term storage. Getting Vaccine Antigens from Plants a new approach involves producing vaccine antigens in genetically modified plants, which can then be extracted and purified. These vaccines can be consumed or applied to mucosal surfaces and offer several benefits, such as being cost-effective, easily accepted by patients, and stable for long-term storage. However, technical challenges and regulatory requirements must be addressed before widespread use, and public acceptance must be ensured. The World Health Organization and other national bodies will continue to support international harmonization of requirements as the development of plant-derived vaccines advances. Injection Type Vaccines There are two methods of administering vaccines, injection and mucosal. Injection type vaccines, given through intramuscular or subcutaneous routes, provide strong protection against diseases and are effective against pathogens that spread through systemic or respiratory routes. These vaccines are typically produced in tobacco plants through transient expression, but the antigens must be purified prior to administration. Oral or nasal vaccines Oral or nasal vaccines, on the other hand, induce both mucosal and systemic immunity. Oral plant-based vaccines are particularly attractive because they are easy to produce and don't require additional medical equipment for injection. They also retain their immunogenicity and biological activities in the gastrointestinal tract, 
due to the natural bioencapsulation of antigens in plant cell organelles. Edible plants such as rice, maize, potato, lettuce, and carrot have been used to develop oral vaccines. Once these vaccines reach the small intestine, the antigens are incorporated into M cells in the follicle-associated epithelium FAE, which results in both mucosal and systemic immune responses. Scaled Production with GMP Requirements Production of recombinant proteins used in pharmaceutical applications requires certain quality standards. The GMP grade is compulsory for clinical applications. There are GMP facilities capable of producing plant-derived recombinant proteins used in pharmaceuticals, including vaccines. Fraunhofer CMB in the U.S. and Medicago Incorporated in Canada are two examples of such facilities. Some university-launched plant-made vaccines have reached Phase I clinical trials and have been produced in collaboration with GMP facilities. The production of these vaccines must meet certain quality standards, including the GMP grade, which is compulsory for clinical applications. The key processing areas in the GMP plant are equipped with complete processing cycles for transient expression in plants such as plant and bacterium cultivation, infiltration, plant harvest, and protein purification. For use with animals. Plant-based vaccines are an asset for the animal use if they can be manufactured at low cost. Moreover, edible vaccines require little effort for administration. In poultry, in addition to the approved vaccine mentioned above, glycoprotein of Newcastle disease virus has been expressed in potato, tobacco, maize, and rice. Similarly, oral administration of a plant-based FMDV vaccine has been shown to be effective in pigs. The vaccine was produced in tobacco leaves and delivered as a freeze-dried powder mixed with feed. The vaccine elicited a strong mucosal and systemic immune response and provided protection against homologous and heterologous FMDV challenges. These studies demonstrate the potential of plant-based vaccines for pig protection against ETC and FMDV, two important diseases in the swine industry. For use with fisheries. Aqua farming relies on ocean water, and excessive use of antibiotics contaminates the environment. The use of oral vaccines for disease prevention in fisheries and aquaculture may ameliorate this problem. Yes. It is possible that the use of oral vaccines for disease prevention in fisheries and aquaculture may help to reduce the contamination of the environment from excessive use of antibiotics. Oral vaccines can provide a safer and more sustainable alternative for disease control in the aquaculture industry. By administering the vaccine orally, it avoids the need for injections, which can be stressful to the fish, and also reduces the risk of environmental contamination. Closing Perspectives In recent years, there has been a growing interest in developing plant-based vaccines as an alternative to traditional vaccine production methods. Advances in plant biotechnology have made it possible to produce vaccines using plant expression systems, which offers several advantages such as low production costs, scalability, safety, and the ability to quickly respond to emerging pathogens. For example, researchers have successfully produced a number of vaccines against human and animal diseases in plants, including the influenza virus, rabies, and hepatitis B. Additionally, the ability to store plants at low temperatures for long periods of time without losing efficacy makes plant-based vaccines a promising solution for remote and resource-limited areas where vaccine distribution can be challenging. Overall, plant-based vaccines hold great potential for improving access to life-saving immunizations and addressing the global public health challenges of the 21st century. To de develop a comprehensive and effective regulatory framework for the clinical use of plant-based vaccines in humans and animals, several key considerations must be taken into account. Firstly, we must identify the appropriate target plants and transgenic methods. The production of transgenic plants for biotherapeutic purposes is highly regulated, and the choice of plants will impact the entire commercialization process. Transient expression systems can produce high quantities of target proteins quickly, 
but their implementation is challenging as it involves the use of atomifacients or viral vectors on a large scale. Secondly, we must determine the best cultivation system, whether it be open field, greenhouse, or in-house. Open field cultivation is less expensive but plant factories provide more controlled and reproducible conditions that comply with GMP standards. Lastly, we must establish procedures for the manufacturing and processing of plant-based pharmaceuticals that maintain quality without sacrificing efficiency. This is essential for the production of high-quality plant-based vaccines for both humans and animals.